Hey everyone, today I'm going to go over how to extrude a logo from an image and a simple piece of geograph. All right, let's get started. First, I'm going to create my piece of geograph. I'll call it PCG underscore logo tutorial, and I'll drag it into the world. Open it up, and now I'll use a get texture data node, and I'm going to import my texture now. There we go. So let's just select it. And you may receive this error that it's an unsupported texture format. If you get that, just open it up and change the compression setting to either Vector Displacement Map or User Interface 2D. Save and close, and now I can unselect and reselect my texture. And now if I debug this, there it is. And I didn't do a good job saving my texture, so I have a few artifacts out here, but you can resolve those with a density filter. And let's set it to 0.1 to start. Not quite, there's still a little noise here, so let's try 0.2. Perfect. All right, so now I need to create a spline to extrude this thing along, so I'm going to first create a point at the center, and then create a second point somewhere higher up. For the center point, I can do a get actor data node, and I'll set the actor filter to self and get a single point. And if I debug this one, there's my point. Now I can create the second point with a transform points node and just move this point upwards. I'll offset it by, let's say, a thousand, a thousand. And if I debug both of these and set them to absolute, I have my two points. Now I can create a spline. To do that, I will first merge the points, and then I will create a spline. I'll leave it at the default here, and now I will sample the spline. I'll change this to distance on spline and leave it at 100, and let's see what we have. There we go, that's the spline data. So now I can copy the, the uh, data from the points over here. So I'll use a copy points, hook that up, and debug this. And where are my points? Let's take a look. Inspect. Well, the position Z is negative million. Position uh, Y is negative 408,000. Uh, why is that? Let's check out the spline. Position Z is 260 and on. And the position Z on the texture is 260. So why does it go to a million? I don't know. But I found I can fix it with a maths op node and subtract the position of the actor from the position of the texture, and that seems to zero out the position such that it is now centered. So let me do that. And I'm going to change this to position. And if you don't have this density filter, you're going to need a two-point node, otherwise your mass op will uh, complain at you. And now let's see what that's done. There we go. Well, the points are here, but they're a little big. And if I inspect this, I see that their scale is 25, so let's fix that with the transform points. I'll just set absolute scale to force it to 111 and debug this. Now let's fix the point scale, but unfortunately when the points were created, the points they were created on still had that scale, so I need to move this transform points earlier. And so I can move it to right after the spline sampler, and that should fix the problem. There, that's a little better sized, and if I rotate this, there's my logo. But I found as I'm rotating this, it's rotating independently of the volume. And it seems to be rotating at a rate of 2 to 1 or half to 1, depending on which direction you're going, which tells me that the rotation is being applied twice. Once is when the points are spawned at the top of the volume from the texture, and once is when they are copied to the spline. 
So to fix that, I need to zero out one of those rotations. I could zero out the actor rotation, but unfortunately that would mean that they don't go in the proper direction, and if I, even if I did zero them out, when the spline is created, it creates a random direction. And if I look at the texture data, well, the rotation is zero on all of them. And let me show you what the spline is doing. I'll change this to point method absolute and axis tripod. And if I look at this, the spline is facing upwards, but it's randomly changing which direction it's pointing. So I can fix that by zeroing out the rotation right here in this transform points. And I can just check absolute rotation because we're already setting everything to zero. And that's gonna force the rotation to be zero. And let's debug this one and change it to absolute and axis tripod. And okay, they're all pointing upwards. And if I rotate it this way, they're still all pointing upwards and in the same X, Y orientation. So that's perfect. That's exactly what I need. Let's check out the logo. Excellent. It's retaining the rotation. All right. So now I can add a little fuzziness to this logo. Let's add a transform points here. And I'll set the offset min to negative 25, negative 25, negative 25, offset max 25, 25, 25. Uh, rotation 0 to 360, scale 0.8 to 1.2, and let's see what this has done. Oh, that's a little fuzzier. Perfect. Now I can spawn everything, so let's turn off this debug and add a static mesh spawner. Mesh entry. I will use a cone because that shows directionality really well. And there we go. It's a logo. And you can see it's taking a little time to generate, so I'm just going to turn off collision presets to no collision. And now if I spin it, it goes really fast. So I think there are a few too many points here, so I can decrease the amount of static meshes with a density noise, followed by a density filter. Choke that up, rearrange everything. And the density filter, let's see how 0.5 looks. Looking fine, let's bump it up a little bit to make a few less points. And that still looks okay. So the last thing I want to do is to be able to set a value that extrudes this up by a, a configurable amount without having to edit the piece G graph. So to do that, I can go into my piece G graph again and into the graph settings, and I'm going to add a parameter. I'm going to change it to a float, and I'll rename it to extrusion, and I will set it to 1000 at default. And so now I can create that offset by a variable. So to do that, I'm going to expand it, and I have the offset min and max here. So now I'll just get this extrusion property, and I'll make a vector. And for the vector, I'm going to change it to a vector instead of vector 2, and hook extrusion up to the z-axis, because in this we're extruding on the z-axis. And now I need to set up the 0, so I'll create an attribute here, and I'll name it 0, and leave it at 0 hook those up, and I've found that you don't need to change any of the input sources or the output target. If you do change the output target, it'll stop working on one or the other of the offsets, so just leave it at none. And now, if I go back here, I can find my extrusion property in the PCG component and change it up to, let's say, 5000. And there we go. You have a logo that you can import from an image file and extrude it to whatever height you want. All right, enjoy.